Whoop, got shots there. Hi guys and welcome to today's task. For today's task we are discussing outlets and switches and as you can tell we are a lot of the way wired up in the house. Switches are in, they are functioning switches which is even better. There are a couple switches that I am putting in right now that are different from a regular switch um, and I'm recommending them for certain reasons and I'll share with you why. This is a timer switch and as you can see there's 10, 20, 30, and 60 minutes or just on and off right here. But if you look at the back this is where it gets interesting. There's a lot of wires coming out of this and what I want to show you is why. This switch has the ability to be a three-way switch. So you have your power coming in, you have your neutral, um, which typically you don't see on a light switch. Uh, most light switches, the neutrals are all tied together in the back, but because this one um, actually has functions in it, you need the neutral to power this properly. Anyway, then you have your ground, pretty common, and then you have these two. These are what we call travelers, and they are similar to a three-way switch because this switch is capable of being a three-way switch, meaning I can set a 10, 15, whatever minutes timer, and I can override it on another timer over here or another switch. And I did that for a reason. I want to, it's ever coming in here to shower, to just, boom, hit that timer automatically so that it will turn on the bathroom fan. That's really recommendation number one I have for you, is if you're gonna put in fans, do not put them on a switch either put them on a timer or a humidity sensor. I went timers because I thought this fan is doing two jobs. One, it is pulling moisture out of this bathroom when somebody's showering, but also it's pulling the stinky air out when somebody's using the potty. So timer it is, and we can have two of these, one here by the tub, and then one kind of back around the corner by the toilet so that whoever's using it can just quickly turn them on and they work. They all talk to each other and if you hit 10 minutes on this one and then hit 20 on that one, it'll jump to 20 minutes. It will override and function properly. So that's what's cool about these. They're not cheap. I will link them in the description. This is the next switch I want to talk about. And these ones are what we call a sunset timer switch as well. And they can be three-way if you want it to be. This one is, but I'm not going to be using it as a three-way switch. Just a one-way switch is how I'm going to wire this one, but the option's nice. And what's cool about this one is all of that information on the inside. So this is programmable and it's built with programs already in it. So based off the time zone of where you live, it knows that information and you choose that and then it can be a switch to either turn on at dusk or dawn or whatever schedule you wanna put it on. So it's really cool. The reason I got this one, come with me, come with me. Don't mind the cabinets coming in, lights coming in. Oh, my little nook. Ballast banners, bat balusters. The whole reason I got this switch is for just this hallway by itself. These are just kind of the only night light we're gonna have in the house. I mean, we will have evening lights, but we like things turned off at night. Since this hallway is kind of tucked away, I just wanted some sort of illumination on this hallway that's really mild. Um, and not a main light that has to be turned on in the middle of the night if you've got to go up or down the stairs for any reason. You don't wake the whole house, you just can simply come by. But I don't want to turn these on and off manually either. And you have the option of a photo cell, but a photo cell has to be visible out here. And I didn't want that. I wanted that hidden look built into them. So that's where this switch comes in. It can turn on and off when I want it to, um, when I program it to, and then I don't have to worry about it. Set it, forget it, and it's hidden away back in this closet, which is powered up as well. You can buy similar lights to this, these switches at a box store. They are very expensive. And I've gone to the trouble of finding them for a good deal online, and I will link them down in the description. I'm gonna show you how to hook up that three-way switch that's a little bit crazy looking. Now, these are the wires I'm gonna be using to hook up this and this white. This is my neutrals. See how they're all bound together in this box because a typical light switch doesn't require the neutral. Really, a light switch is just interrupting power. So the neutrals are all the way set in the box for that light already. Um, but this switch does because of how it gets illuminated, so we have to account for that. What we have to look at here is we have our 
This black and red go together, they're travelers. This is our ground, this is our neutral, and then this guy right here is our common. So on a three-way you have your neutral sometimes, you have a ground, you have a common, and then you have the two travelers. And um, this is where we gotta keep things really squared away. But right now, because this common is not feeding power, if you're following me, this light switch has power coming in and power going back out right now. If you turn it off, power's only coming in, not going back out. On this switch right now, this wire actually just goes straight to the fan itself. When it comes to a three-way, all you're doing is really is interrupting that power coming in and going to the light um, in a multiple different ways. And so on this end, I don't have any of these wires that are hot. Now I do have to be careful because these are hot and I don't want to bump them. Uh, but right here, we're good. We should be good. So to keep the lights on so you can visually see what we're doing, I am going to work on this one hot. I don't recommend that for anybody. I've gotten a lot of flack for working on stuff hot, but I will tell you this. Is that wire not? If you are trying to diagnose problems with electrical, um, you have to turn the power on and start playing and moving around with your tick tracer. So I will link this particular tick tracer as well. So first things first, we're gonna hook up our neutral and I can just bind it to this whole set of neutrals right here. They're good to go. And we'll just wire nut that guy on. That is a fat stack of neutrals, but that's okay. Next, I know for certain that this one is my common. And I know that this is my common. So, we just wire nut those guys together as well. And they sent wire nuts in those, but I like these guys. Um, I don't remember what brand they are, but I'll link these as well. They're, for a long time, these little guys didn't have this big rubber grommet on the back and didn't cover as much, and now they just came out with these about a year ago, and I am just, I've loved them ever since. So I'll link those. They're fantastic wire nuts. Okay, next one. We do know our ground, and here's where the ground gets a little tricky. When you bring your grounds in, you bond all your grounds together throughout the entire house. So all of the wires, every single wire, doesn't matter which one, if they're travelers, if they're commons, whatever comes in, all of your neutrals connect together and all your grounds connect together and then you run a ground washer on it that has a hole through it and then you just run one ground out. Then we link that, daisy chain that to all of them. So with a regular switch, you can put the screw in here and then loop it around and screw it into the other one but this one we don't have that option so what i'm going to do is just take this guy straighten it out and whoop got shocked there i yeah yeah touch that hot one oh that's the worst feeling in the world <laughs> dummy jill oh boy all right so we're going to take these two grounds that is not what shocked me, by the way. My fingers came around and touched those screws. Okay. Good solid connection. Now we just have our two travelers. And I'm gonna go red to red, and we'll go black to this other traveler. Now this is a total cluster of wires here. So we're gonna really wanna be careful when we place this in, but I will not screw these in and put them in place uh, with the power on. That you will get shocked, and what I don't want to do is um, have it arc something, because then that causes a mess too. So we'll wait. So we have a solid green dot here, and what I've realized is I was actually looking at this too much like a three-way. So on a typical three-way, you have your common and then your two travelers. And that's how I looked at this was, 
my common was going to be my line coming in, but what I didn't realize is it switches in this. Your common, the power comes in, goes through your travelers, and goes back out on the common to your light switch. It doesn't work that way on this one. It comes in on your common, goes through your travelers, and you have to designate one of your travelers to be your new common, which would be your common on your light switch. What would be your common is now going to be one of your main travelers, and so your low switches on this type of switch. So initially when I turned it on, I was actually getting a flickering light right there, but I was getting power along um, everything. And that's a problem. So if we turn this guy on now, now I have power going through everything. And before it was just going through everything, but it was kind of finicky looking power. So that's how you could kind of tell. Um, and the fan wouldn't turn on, it kind of recognized that it wasn't good power. So, now we've got it squared away, you just have to keep that in mind. Your lines on these and loads on these change just a little bit. Reference the diagram. All the three ways I've wired in this house so far have gone in really easy because I've kept track of what is travelers, what is common, and this one threw me for a loop because it's a backwards kind of system. But it does work really well, and now this bathroom is on a constant timer, and we can just shut it off or let it run out its time and it'll shut off for us. That's a really simple way to elevate any bathroom and make sure that the bathroom actually um, clears out really well. So you run it for the longest time you need to. And two, um, I hate hearing a fan run in the middle of the night. I can hear it and I think, oh, I've got a switch running. I've got power being wasted. So this eliminates that as well. It'll shut off after so long and then the switch is off. So if you learned something from today's task, Give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys later.